The notice of a regular meeting of the City of Friendswood Planning and Zoning Commission to be held Thursday, February 11th, 2020, beginning at 7 p.m. in the Council Chambers at City Hall, located at 910. Oops, yep, today's not the 11th, is it? Today is the 13th. Mm -hmm. uh, beginning at 7 p.m. in the Council Chambers at City Hall, located at 910 South Friendswood Drive, Friendswood, Texas. The Planning and Zoning Commission regular meeting is called to order. We will now receive any communication from the public or committee liaisons to the commission to comply with provisions of the Open Meetings Act. The commission may not deliberate on subjects discussed under this agenda item. However, the commission may direct such subjects be placed on a later regular commission agenda for discussion and or possible action. Anyone from the public that would like to speak at this particular time? Seeing none, uh, we will now receive comments from the public, both oral and written, regarding two topics. Uh, first are proposed amendments to Appendix C, Zoning Ordinance Sections 10 through 12 regarding the Board of Adjustment Establishment and Procedure, Powers and Duties, and Appeals from the Board of Adjustment and Section 20. Definitions to be consistent with, and all of that to be consistent with state law, particularly Chapter 211 of the Local Government Code. Aubrey, is there a staff summary? Uh, yeah, we've been discussing this um, at a few of our meetings. Uh, so this is just the actual uh, public hearing and then later um, our uh, consideration to uh, make a recommendation to city council. So basically uh, there was a lot of extra requirements in our ordinance that are not in state law. So we're uh, just removing those requirements to be consistent with state law. Um, also the definition in uh, section 20 under variances had additional um, information and requirements. So we moved that to um, the actual um, section of the ordinance that addresses variances rather than just the definition, so. Okay, is there anyone from the public that would like to speak for or against making these changes? Okay, seeing none. Next are proposed amendments to Appendix C, Zoning Ordinance Section 7.P.6, Permitted Use Table regarding changes to NAICS Code 447 gasoline stations, number 511 publishing industries, and number 713940 fitness and recreational sports centers. Aubrey. Um, yes, these are um, so the gasoline station or gas stations is a change in the downtown district to remove the SUP, uh, the publishing industries. And I apologize, I did not print out all of my notes and I don't have a computer tonight. <laughs> uh, I could go pull it up on the other one. Just to go over in detail what the changes are. Oh, it's right there. Um, so publishing industries is to add a, a permitted in CSC to allow by right. Um, to change the specific use in downtown to permitted um, to allow by right in the downtown district. And then uh, the fitness and recreational sports centers was is GEMS um, to change the S uh, to a P to allow by right in the downtown district. Okay, is, is there anyone from the public that would like to speak for or against making these changes? Okay, seeing none. Next is the consent agenda. These items are considered routine and ministerial in nature and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion of items unless a commissioner or citizen so request, in which case the item would be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Is there a motion to approve the Sterling Creek Section 4 final plat and the minutes of the Planning and Zoning Commission January 23rd, 2020 regular meeting? I'll motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Shows to be unanimous. <coughs> Next on our agenda are the action items. According to the Planning and Zoning Rules of Procedure, R2019-15, 
All action of the commission shall be made by an affirmative vote of four or more members of the commission present at such commission meetings. Our first action item is consideration and possible action regarding a proposed site plan amendment at 107 West Heritage Drive to amend the type of fence material. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. I'll second. Okay. Aubrey, is there any additional information? Um, yeah, we just included um, in your backup material the previously approved uh, or the previous site plan that we considered. Um, so when the applicant brought this before us the first time, the proposal was to replace the gates and the fence on the front of the property with wood material. Um, and he's gotten opinions from some of the contractors that have looked at it saying that the wood is going to be too heavy. Uh, his gates are like 12 foot gates. Um, and so he's coming back um, to get approval for the R panel fences, which will match the building in material and color um, and be a lighter material for his gate mechanisms to hopefully last a little longer. Okay. Is the applicant uh, here? Any comments that you'd like to make? Well, if you could step up to the podium, please. And if you would, state your name, please. I'm Charlotte Grindstaff. Hi. Um, I'll, I don't know if there's something you want to know, I'll be happy to try to tell you. Of course, I managed to come here by proxy. My husband's still at work. But um, <laughs> he's like, that's what happened last time. <laughs> I think he plans that. Now, um, I mean, I think he sent some pictures of that. Um, I mean, personally, I think it probably would look better than the wood anyway, and it definitely would be lighter as far as the construction. Okay. I don't know. Well, just if you hang on just a second, we'll just go around and see if there's anybody with any questions. Brett? Uh, I don't have any questions. I, I agree. Uh, wood fence in that length was, would be very heavy. And uh, wood fences, they look great day one. And from there, they deteriorate and they look really bad by a year or two later. So exactly. this is a better material. It's going to look better. So uh, I have no problems with it. Yeah. How about the, uh, the portion of the uh, fence that's going to border? I think it's a tent rental facility. Is that going to still be wood? Or no, it'll all be, it'll it'll all be switched. Mm -hmm. is it, it may have said in the write up, but what, what is the material exactly? What is the material? Yeah. Oh, um, what is that? Our, our panel? I, I, I'm, I'm, is it a metal? Is it yeah. Aluminum? Well, it's the same kind of. Yeah. It's the what you know when they make the siding uh, for those uh, buildings. It's okay. basically it's that same type of material. So it's aluminum. Material. Uh huh. Well, you know, I hate to say aluminum. Is that what it is? Um, I think it's just, when I looked it up online, at least it was, it, it was, it was steel, steel. but it was, steel. Co it's a okay. coated, they use it in as a roofing material in many right. cases. Okay. That's when I looked it up. So, right. okay. but I'm not the expert. Yeah. I, I don't have any objections to it though. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. okay. I'll go down to the other side, Mark. Um, so you, you, you have not selected the R panel for the building or you have, you have, mm -hmm. But you gave us options. Are are one of the you mean the four, colors? Yeah, well, I, not only colors, but patterns look different too. So, is what you're going to put on the fence one of the four that you gave us? Have you narrowed that down? Or my, my concern, not that my mm -hmm. concern is that I don't know how many options of our panel are out there, mm -hmm. and and typically we have a better idea of what that look and feel is going to be like at this point. Okay. I don't want to really speak out of turn, but sure. my impression is, is that it will simply be the same as what the is same. on the building. Okay. And then apparently you can buy it and have it either, I don't know if you have to cut it or right. if it comes in certain sizes and then it would be trimmed, um, you know, to match. Okay. So what's, what's the process? If, if my understanding is that they're going to put the same R panel, that's, I'm in support of it. If it's the same, if it's not the same, then I guess there's more discussion to have. In my, from my perspective. So what, what are we approving? Well, you know what? I mean, I could, I could text my husband real quick, but my understanding is that it's just, it's, you know, just purchase the same R painting that, that yeah. is on the building. And he, yes, so that it would be. Okay. His letter states <laughs> that yeah, he, that, that the R panel siding is consistent in color and type to the siding used on the building. Perfect. Okay. So that's that's what we're debating, mm -hmm. and then the so the examples are just examples of what an R panel fence would look like. Yes. Exactly. I understand. Thank you. Exactly. Thanks. Okay. Lisa, I, I like it a lot better than the cedar fence, so I'm in favor. 
Rich? Yeah, I agree. It looks, I think this is a good decision. Good. That definitely makes sense. So I, I think you said it. I just want to make sure I have it straight in my head. It's not just the gates, but the whole fence and the gates will all be that R material. Correct. Okay. Well, I have nothing else. Could I ask one more? What, what, are, you, what are you going to do there? What's, what do you do with your facility? You know, it's, um, it, it, we haven't really done anything with it yet. I mean, it, we're just trying to. be a business or? I, I think so, yes. Undecided still? Though? Kind of undecided. <laughs> I, I'm not in charge of that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> not your area. You're asking me too hard of questions. No, yeah. Okay, any other any other questions? Okay, we have a a motion to approve and, and a second. All in favor? Shows to be unanimous. Awesome. Okay. Thank you very thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next is consideration and possible action regarding the site plan approval for a proposed gas station at 2210 South Friendswood Drive. Uh, this is the site plan was approved previously as well as an extension, but the extension expired uh, requiring a new approval. Is there a motion? Yes, I'll motion for <laughs> approval. <laughs> We're slow tonight. Second. Okay, Aubrey, is there any anything additional information, staff comments? Uh, just so this is the gas station down close to West Ranch. I think there's a, uh, I think there's an Exxon sign on the location. There was a driveway installed, and they did receive a tech stop permit to install that driveway. Um, the building permits were issued for this project back in July. The owner picked them up and paid for them, and just came in at the beginning of January and we were like, uh, <laughs> all your stuff is expired. So um, we worked with them to get signatures on their construction plans because those are um, y'all, those don't come to y'all, but they go to engineering and drainage district and those approvals expire in 365 days as well. So um, we've been working with them. We're gonna extend their permits, um, but we needed to get this reapproval um, just administratively so we could um, get them going on this project. But it's the same exact submittal that we've approved in the past. Yes, yes. I think the previous motion did include the approval to mitigate for the 12 trees, um, so they'll pay into the tree fund um, prior to certificate of occupancy. So if we can amend the uh, motion to include that as well. Okay. <clears throat> I don't see anybody else here tonight, so the applicant did not attend. So. Mark, any questions or uh, discussion? Would you like me to amend the motion now? That would be good. So I'll amend the motion to approve with the um, 12 tree. Is it an exception? It's mitigation to the pay into the 12 tree mitigations that was documented in the city memo. I second the amended motion. We did this last time. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> we started before. Anyway. Yeah. So I'll ask anybody. Anybody have any questions? Right. I, just, I have just one, and it's just a process clarification again. Um, this will go again in front of drainage, or since it's the same? Uh, we sent them to the drainage district. I think the drainage district gave them a three-month extension, um, okay. and so they re-approved re their plans. Okay. So drainage has seen it again since yes. then? Yes. Mm -hmm. No questions. Anybody else? Any uh, by giving this approval, how long does this extend it for? Uh, so their site plan will be good for a year. And they can so do another year from now. So yes. next February they may come back and <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not. not. We, but, okay. we hope they start this project. But that's when it would happen if it did. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay. Any, anything else? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Chose to be unanimous. <clears throat> okay. Next is consideration and possible action regarding a recommendation to City Council for the proposed amendments to Appendix C, Zoning Ordinance Section. 10 through 12 regarding the Board of Adjustment Establishment and Procedure, Powers and Duties, and Appeals from the Board of Adjustment and Section 20 definitions, all to be consistent with state law, particularly Chapter 211 of the Local Government Code. So is there a motion? Motion oh. to approve. There we go. Second. <laughs> I think this would be me. <laughs> Just barely. Okay. 
Aubrey, any, anything else that is checking? Okay. I don't have anything to add. Any, any discussion at this point? If not, then we have a, a motion and a second. All in favor? Shows to be unanimous. <clears throat> Okay, our last action item is consideration and possible action regarding a recommendation to City Council for the proposed amendments to Appendix C, Zoning Ordinance Section 7.P.6, Permitted Use Table regarding changes to NAICH use number 447, gasoline stations, number 511, publishing industries, <coughs> and number 713940, fitness and recreational sports centers. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Wow, yeah. Second. There's, oh, there you go. <laughs> Aubrey, just checking. Anything else? Okay. No, sir. Okay, Lisa. Any any comments or questions at this point? Aye. Any, um, anybody in else? In favor of the changes. Okay. So we have a motion in a second. All in favor? Shows to be unanimous. Okay, next under discussion items, we have a presentation by Samantha Haritas. Did I come close? Okay, <laughs> I'll do better. Friendswood's uh, deputy city engineer regarding updates on drainage plans for the city. Samantha. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Samantha, I'm, gonna this up slow. I'm Samantha Haritas. I'm the deputy director of engineering. Um, I'm going to start by kind of giving an overview of what my role is and a little bit about my background and then I'll go into the PowerPoint. So um, I help the director of engineering. We, we have a staff of six in the engineering department right now, so there's a lot of work. Our schedules are very full. I, I basically am his, um, you know, inform or informant on any meetings that he can't attend. I'm aware of everything that he's going over. And then all of the drainage and flood control projects are kind of my area, as well as um, a, a lot of the background work that goes into the bond projects and any projects that we need grants on. So my background, I have 15 years of hydraulic and hydrology experience. I've worked in this area, in the Houston, Galveston area for the last 15 years. My first eight years were with the Army Corps of Engineers and the Galveston District. And I actually worked on the Clear Creek reevaluation report study. So I'm very familiar with Clear Creek. And um, then I worked for private firms continuing to do that, eight, the hydraulic and hydrology modeling. And um, so I have a lot of partnerships with, or you know, relationships with people in the area and um, a lot of background in uh, flood control modeling and uh, and actually when I went to school my uh, major was ocean engineering and one of the really interesting things to me for the Houston area is how these bayou and riverine projects tie into the coast so it's really a fascinating area for people interested in that line of study. Okay. So I'm going to give uh, an overview of some of the flood control projects that we're working on. We have several other ones that we're working on that I'm not necessarily going into here, so hopefully I can come back and go into those. But this is what we're focusing on like in the very immediate future. So I'm going to start with um, kind of talking about some of our coordination and partnering efforts. This is really critical to the flood control projects in this area. Um, and also for extending the bond money that was recently passed. You know, we want to make sure that we're taking advantage of grants and partnering opportunities so that money goes as far as it can. Good. So I've, I've um, identified some of our main partners up here, Harris County, Galveston County, the various flood control districts. And then I'll, I'll go into to it in here in a little bit, but with the, um, the League City study, it's a uh, federal study of Lower Clear Creek and Dickinson Bayou. We're actually partnering with several cities and um, the drainage control districts and counties all along Clear Creek for that study. So, oh, I forgot I'm supposed to do this. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go into more detail with about some of our partnering uh, efforts. 
with Harris County Flood Control District, we recently went down there and, and asked them, you know, what would the City of Friendswood need to do in order to partner with you on projects? And what we got out of that is that we would have to have a hydraulic and hyd hydrology and hydraulic report and we would have to identify a positive benefit cost assessment. So um, I, don't, I don't know if you know what that is, but basically whenever we have a project, we would have to show that, um, that we'd have to show the reduction in flooding for that project and in dollars, you know, compare the damages before and after. Um, so we talked about them, you know, in general, what we need to do. And then we also talked with them more specifically about two projects that I'm going to discuss here in the future. One was Forest Bend Detention, which we recently received a CDBG DR grant for, or a Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery Grant. Thank you. Grant. Yes, sorry. <laughs> and, um, and the other one is uh, a, t pro a proposed terracing plant proposed terracing project along the Wickham property, which is also the Clear Creek Community Church property. And I'll, I'll go into those here in a minute. And then the final effort that we've um, had ongoing with the Harris County Flood Control District, we've met a few times with their meteorologist and talked to them about putting in additional gauges. And um, they are going to install one gauge at Dixie Farm along Clear Creek. And we, we had identified several other areas where we were hoping to have gauges, but it came out of that meeting that if the gauges are too close together, the, the readings can interfere, so they can only put them so close together. However, we are, um, as part of an interlocal agreement, we're going to have that one gauge added, and then they're going to replace the weather station at the public safety building, and then there's certain areas uh, that we're going to actually have them um, take the existing gauges that they have there and tie back the water surface elevation so during different storms we will have some idea of what the elevation at various points are. And at some point we'll be able to all put that on a map and that will be available for the public to review. Okay. Uh, efforts with the Galveston County Consolidated Drainage District. We've uh, we've been to several meetings with them, uh, both uh, interagency meetings and one-on-one -on -one meetings. And here in the in the next year, we're going to be working on them with the uh, the inline detention project at Imperial Estates. Um, they the original project there, they were going to remove about 250 acre feet of dirt but they've already removed over 300 acre feet and they think that there's a lot more capacity out there. So um, I, I'll, that's one of the projects I'm gonna talk about here in the future, but that we've, we've been talking about that effort. And then in addition to that, a lot of, they have other work planned all along Clear Creek, but they haven't necessarily uh, done much engineering work concerning it. So we're gonna work with them to capture where all these projects are and um, in the event that they might need some hydraulic and hydrology analysis work to possibly do that in-house so we don't have to pay anyone um, to, to have that modeling done. Uh, also, so the Rice University, Dr. Bedient worked on the study that the city of Friendswood uh, recently had done with a technical committee. And uh, we recently went there and talked with him. He actually gave the presentation to the director of engineering and myself. And, um, and so we just wanted to solidify that relationship and make sure that, you know, going forward, uh, if, if we needed additional modeling services, he was on board. And also to see if, you know, there was anything that wasn't in the, in the report that might be of interest for our uh, city and the engineering department. Uh, Galveston County, we recently talked to um, the county engineer and he said that right now they are redoing their master drainage plan and it's for the mainland and they will be identifying 10 to 15 flood control projects and so now is a really good time to partner with them and hopefully get some of the projects that we want done along Clear Creek as part of that master drainage plan. So we're going to be working um, at improving the partnership with Galveston County so we can hopefully 
have a few projects done through their, um, their master drainage plan efforts. The Houston Galveston Area Council, this is their, they have like a, a flood control committee. And uh, so they, they're working right now on formulating tools that will help us determine that benefit cost assessment <coughs> for these projects that, uh, that you know, we're using grants for. Um, so they're, they're, they're working to, uh, they're, they're working to make these tools, uh, so they're Houston and Galveston area specific. So that'll be really great. And, and we're working to see if we can get a city of Friendswood seat on that specific committee. Because every, everyone from the local cities and counties is, you know, that have, that have flood control issues are on that committee. So it would be a really great um, forum for us to participate in. Okay, the final coordination partnering effort I'm gonna discuss is the Lower Clear Creek and Dickinson Bayou Federal Study. Um, league study, or league, sorry, it's also called the League City Study. We recently attended the first stakeholder meeting for this project on December 11th. And this is going to be a regional study. So everything from Dixie Farm down to the coast and also Dickinson Bayou is going to be assessed as part of this study. Um, they are going to be using a 1D, 2D model, which in, in the H and H or hydraulic hydrology world, that's kind of like the state of the art technology. So that's really exciting. In general, when you go from the type of uh, models that were used for our study to using this 1D, 2D model, you actually see more, uh, drain, more street drainage and urban drainage running off into the creek. So I wouldn't be surprised when they, when they get these final results if it actually shows even more flooding along Clear Creek than the previous models did. But so anyhow, this is gonna be, this model will be a really good tool for the city. We can use that when we, uh, when we do our uh, planning efforts going forward. And we're really hoping that some of the projects that are identified will be either within the city of Friendswood or will, you know, maybe, maybe it's a detention basin that's downstream, but it's still gonna, or like I, I, maybe the, maybe, you know, maybe the projects will not necessarily be in the city of Friendswood, but they would help with the, the flood elevation. So. That's really exciting. The, um, in February, they're going to begin studying the, or they're gonna begin modeling the existing conditions. And by May of 2021, that study will be complete. There are public meetings and for the, for the city of Friendswood on March 4th, there's going to be a public meeting at the Friendswood High School. And I highly encourage anybody that has any concerns about flood control within the city of Friendswood to attend that meeting and express your concerns. I think there will be a small presentation, but for the most part, it's going to be, um, you know, like board set up with people that you can physically talk to and ask questions. So it's, it's not just a sit down presentation where they're gonna talk to you. I think they really are interested in hearing from the communities what our concerns are. Okay. So I would, this is kind of the, the overall or overarching agenda that the um, engineering department has. Uh, the first one is to continue identifying these partnering opportunities and to work on making these partnerships even better than they already are because that's gonna be really important going forward. Another, um, another uh, goal that we have is to try to procure any models that have been done previously along Clear Creek and any ongoing studies because there's so many studies going on in all these different departments that it's gonna be really important that we capture what's really out there and what's really going to be built so that our studies reflect you know, something tangible and some, instead of something that you know, doesn't really make sense. So that's gonna be really critical. And if we have those models in house, uh, we will be able, our, our, yeah, the, the engineering department will be able to have like a baseline condition so we can show flood maps for what the condition is now. And then as we build these projects over time, we can keep showing the updated maps to the public so they can see how these projects are helping the city. So I think that's, um, that'll be critical. And then um, another, another great thing, if we have these models in house, um, for emergency management, when if, if 
for, you know, if we have an even bigger storm than Harvey that's coming along, or if we have specific rainfall we want to look at, we can run that through that model that we'll have up to date that we harbor here so we can shoot out different scenarios so the, so the public can know what's coming. So, and then the final goal for the engineering section, um, we've already been using geographical information system information within the city of Friendswood, but we haven't really been maximizing its potential. So uh, we are working with all the different departments at the city of Friendswood so that we can really utilize that technology to its advantage. And that's going to be really great for the city because we'll have a lot more maps and a lot more information available to the public by doing that. So we're really excited about that. Okay, I'm going to go into the drainage projects. Um, we basically have like a short-term agenda and then a long-term agenda. And for the short-term agenda, the most immediate future, we have three projects that we've identified. The first one is in purple, Imperial Estates. It's an inline detention project that we are working on with Galveston County Consolidated Drainage District. And then the second one is the Forest Bend Detention in red. It's, um, it was, we were awarded the Community Block Development Disaster Recovery Grant for three and a half million for this project. And then the last project we're looking at for the immediate future is the Wickham property, also known as the Clear Creek uh, Community Church property. And that, that would be a terracing project. Oops, how do I go back? Are you gonna explain that more? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into each project. All right, I missed that part too. Sorry, okay. So the first one of, one of these projects that we're, that we're working on for the immediate future is the Imperial Estates project. We have been working with Galveston County Consolidated Drainage District on this already. Initially, they were expecting to remove about 250 acre feet from the area. They've already removed 300 acre feet and they think that they're only about 25% done removing dirt. So this is really exciting. This detention basin or well, inline detention area is gonna, it, it could end up being 1,200 or 1,500 acre feet, maybe even more. And one of the, um, I'm one so, of the things I'm sorry, that, can, oh. I got a really dumb question. I hope I don't make a fool of myself asking this. The difference between an acre and an acre foot, or acre feet, so what's acre, that unit? Acre is area, acre yeah. feet is a volume. Sure, but. It's the area times the depth. That, okay, that's, yeah. okay. One acre, one foot deep. Right, one foot deep. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. But so they're, I, they said that they are, they said that they've been able to go as, as deep as like 12 or 13 feet in areas up there, which they were really surprised yeah. once they got in there. And I think the area was larger than they were originally considering. So one of the efforts that we are working on in the very, you know, right now, we are working in-house on capturing what the volume of this area is really going to be using uh, engineering tools. And then in-house, we are going to use the same modeling methodology that the Dr. Bedient study did to uh, determine what the reduction in flood elevation with this project would be. Just off the, off the top of my head, I'm guessing that we're gonna see at a minimum a 0.25 foot reduction, if not more. Four you know, it takes, a, it takes a lot four, to really see. Four inches? Did I redo the yeah, math three, right? Three inches. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. That, that one too. Yeah. I, think <laughs> I was testing. Be, I think you. it'll be yeah. three to six inches. Yeah. This is a really large area, so I, we're really excited about this. That's, that's a significant amount to drop. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, yeah. the the other <laughs> the other project I'm going to talk about, the Forest Bend detention, is only 70 acre feet for comparison. This is a massive area. That's a lot of land. Can so, I ask, where, where's all the dirt going? I see the trucks, but I don't know where it's going. I don't know where they're where's taking Alvin? it. Alvin. Yeah. Well, Alvin. Alvin. Five, Alvin. five seventeen. What's Alvin doing with it? Dumping it in a hole. <laughs> okay. I, I will say, you know, work. Yeah, I was going to say, working with Galveston County Consolidated Drainage District, Drainage District they really, uh, you get more dirt excavation for your money than working <laughs> with Harris County. So it's exciting <laughs> to partner with them. And what is our role here and compared to Galveston County? I mean, so uh, they are they are they, they are removing it? all the dirt. They're doing that, and right. we're just are we just monitoring it, or what are we doing? So or, we are they so so going forward in order to finish removing the dirt, they want us to partner with them for that remaining 
the remaining cost, they... So, they in the future, we will be paying part of the removal, but yes, so far, will, we've been getting a free ride. So far, all we donated the land. So Sweet. that was our share. But going forward... And now the land's so gone, much, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> since it's so much larger than they originally Forward. thought, they expect that it's going to cost them an additional $15 million to finish removing the dirt in this area. And they're, they they have initially come to us asking for $6 million as as part of that $15 million. <laughs> but we want to make sure, you know, with, with engineering... Uh, you know, we have we have engineering data to support that it's really worth the providing impact, that yeah. six million. So, so that's kind of where we're at with that. But this is, you know, this is one of the main projects we're looking at for this next year. What's the estimated time frame? Uh, uh, well, they're working on this right now. I I would think probably another two years. I don't even think it'll be that long. Okay. Do you have any idea? I haven't I haven't been around long. I mean, I came in November, so I haven't been around enough to see how long they've been moving dirt. <laughs> 54,000 truckloads so far. Wow. It's a lot of dirt. So what what is the significance of the green versus the red? So I think the, the red properties were still houses that had not, uh, had not, they were still living there. So I'm not sure how that will factor into uh. all of it going forward, but. I would imagine they'll have a very steep driveway there <laughs> eventually <laughs> they'll buy. Yeah. Yeah. I think the remaining step. ones Sometimes, there yeah. are on stilts. But uh, yeah, the the green lots, those were results of buyouts after Tropical Storm Allison. Mm -hmm. And um, they were incorporated as um, to be part of 1776 Park. Right. So And, and we do plan, that this is also going to be our role, we plan on putting, uh, you know, trails and park features out there once this is all done. That will be the city's Very nice. responsibility. And, the, okay. and Galveston County is not playing a part in this, just the... It's the no, it's Galveston County Consolidated Drainage District. Yeah, okay, but not Galveston itself. Okay. Right. The okay. red on the and map. It, and it's us and them. Oh, yeah, the red, so the red on the map is, uh, the dark red is the floodway. So... The property is probably not worth very much if these homeowners want to sell out. You know, I, I would think they should have taken the buyout. But. <laughs> but this was the floodway before the, the dirt was removed. Yeah, it, it probably would be if General representation. Slightly. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I don't know that we plan on updating the flood maps for. For, for that solid. Yeah. Okay. Like, I got it. Yeah. Right. Okay. So the next project is the Forest Bend Detention Project. So the, the grant that we received for this project, it's a community development block grant disaster recovery. It's for about three and a half million. And the cost information that was provided when we applied for this grant was for an approximately 70 acre foot detention basin. So I think that they were looking at doing seven acres about 10 feet deep. This, this whole property, wait. <laughs> I'm having technical <laughs> difficulties. I don't think it's on. Okay, so this this whole area is the area that I'm talking about for this. But so the so for the amount of money that we received this grant for we are probably only going to be able to build detention for about this area. So we went to Harris County Flood Control District and we talked to them about this project. And while we were there, we found out that there are two storm drains that run along here that uh, release into Clear Creek. And so Harris County Flood Control District owns the right of way along those. And they are also interested um, they, they've been working with some, some uh, d like neighborhoods, I guess, that didn't have detention basins originally instilled or installed. So um, they have funding for, for projects like this, and they are interested in working with us on this. They just need to see that hydraulic and hydrology study that's going to show positive benefits. So um, the other the other great thing that there's this outlet here is. Uh, we, we probably are going to be able to utilize that existing outlet feature for the detention basin, so we may be able to get around core permitting problems. Oh, nice. Yes, yeah, so, so that actually the, the CDBG 
grants have to be from start to finish done in two years, so that could be a really um, hefty issue if we got yeah. stuck waiting for a, a permit. So I'm, I'm going to go into a little bit more, but if, if I need to, you can have me come back. To that. So what is that going to look like at the end? It's hard. Is that going to be terracing or is that actually going to be a pond? So we're, we're having the consultant model two alternatives. The CDBGDR grant basically stated that it would have to be offline detention. This was like a year ago. So this is before we had all the information that we have now. So the first alternative that we are having the consultant model is just that, uh, that the 70 acre foot detention basin that the CDBG grant is for. And then we are having them model a second alternative that would optimize the entire area and let me go back really quick. So it would optimize that entire area and then also provide inline detention right here. So it would be a combination okay. offline inline detention project. How deep do you intend to dig it? Well, that's going to be limited by whatever the water table is. I mean, for the first for the first alternative, where I think the the cost pretty much limits it to about ten feet. 10 I think feet? there's wow. there's also a um, there's some kind of storm sewer feature. I don't know if it's a what's it uh, I, I don't know if it's a force main or or what, but there is there's some pipe that runs along there that's about ten feet deep. So it might get really costly if we go much deeper than that. Even so, that second alternative. If we were to maximize the project, we're hoping that we would partner with Harris County Flood Control District and talking with them, if they were to expand the scope, they would only match us either 50-50 or 25-75. They wouldn't fully fund that extra cost. Um, so so we'll, we'll eventually bring this, you know, the, the cost estimates for each modeling alternative to council and we'll try to figure out what the what we're going to do there, whether we're just going to take the three and a half million or, or um, maximize the project. Okay, so the timeline for this, we're planning to put out the environmental and engineering RFP in spring 2020, and then a year later it would go out for construction, and then the project would wrap up a year after that. Okay, the final project that's on our short-term agenda is the Wickham property. This I'm, is sorry, I'm sorry, Samantha. Um, there was two areas that you had on that last drawing. Is, is the other one? Is there any significance to the one on the left, or is that just an artifact of the drawing? Where is it? The uh, forest bin. Yeah, the, you had. Oh, there was this the, isn't this part here. The, this is a different park. Okay, so that's this not nothing Oxnard to do with park. this. Yeah, it's just it's just this area here. That's and actually, there are several projects I like, <clears throat> we're working on identifying potential projects in, and Oxnard Park is an area that we're looking at, but. But Not no, in okay. the very near but immediate it, you didn't, That was just part of the drawing. Okay, yeah, it's just part fine. of the drawing. So. Okay. 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 So the final short-term agenda project is the Wickham property terracing. So it would be the, the red, dark red area is the floodway. We would terrace the area from the floodway extents to the, the creek. So it would be this area in here. We recently presented a memorandum of understanding to council where the Clear Creek Community Church is, is willing to let us utilize this property for a terracing project if we will do the hydraulic and hydrology analysis. And then later on, we would do an additional memorandum of understanding where the city of Friendswood would do all the engineering analysis and construction. And they are interested in having us give them the, the excavated material to raise up the property that's, I guess, where they're, it, we could put it in these areas here because they're the 500 year floodplain, so it's not going to be a fill issue. But that's actually great for us because it's going to reduce the excavation costs. So, of, of note, this picture here, if you see the green area along the creek, there is a national wetlands um, inventory. So we will have to work with the core on mitigation for the wetlands for this project. So that will increase the costs. And what's the benefit of terracing? So, we, well, did, did you... Why that option? Why that option? Well, when you terrace, you're usually... Well, I guess this is what Galveston County Consolidated District has been mainly doing because you're able to avoid 
needing a permit for touching the, the creek. But it's a separate permit for, for environmental. We could, we could go deeper, but right now we're just, we were just doing the terracing option because it would be less mitigation working with the core. But it's inline storage. I mean, it's just it's widening. A, yeah, the, uh, the difference, the difference is water. terracing, you're going to go to like the, you know, where they have the bank considered and cut over. And if you were to do inline detention, you'd go below the bank. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. But when you touch that, when you touch the high water mark, then the core starts getting really concerned. Okay. So that's why, why we've been trying to avoid that. Why would the, I'm just curious to learn, why would the fill have to go in those two spots versus because, the rest? Because the other two, well, the, it could go in the other two spots, but then they would have to have, I mean, it could go in this area here, but then they would have to have a hydraulic and hydrology no rise study done for FEMA to show well, that. I, I, I don't understand why that is. So whenever you put whenever you put fill in uh, in like a hundred year floodplain or the floodway, you have to go through FEMA and provide a hydraulic and hydrology you're, study. You're it's called a no floor. rise or no impact study. Yeah. And I would worry that that much yeah. amount of fill would yeah. cause a rise in the. Uh, okay. You're not getting the benefit. Yeah. Okay. So right. a little bit more information. So we have an engineering consultant looking at terracing for this project. And uh, they are also working on a cost estimate for the engineering and construction. This is a project that we are considering going after a community block development mitigation grant for. So, um, well, we, we, we may go after it either alone or trying to partner with <coughs> Harris County Flood Control District or um, possibly even Galveston County Consolidated Strange District for a, more a regional grant. We have s several, I, I, I'll, I'll go into that on another presentation. Yeah, there's, <laughs> okay. that gets really complicated. And, and clarify for me, this is just on the north side of the creek? You're not yes, looking at both sides? Yes, it's just the Harris County side. Why? Um, because the, that's the property that belongs to the church. But um, no one's looking at terracing the rest of the red air that you're talking about as part of any other project? There's homes in the way, I think. Yeah, I there? think there's homes. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah I can yeah. see that right there. But further south, downstream, it looks like maybe there's some. So I was just curious. The projects, like we have several projects identified, but right now the the main constraints when we're identifying projects are real estate, whether there's homes on there, how much those homes cost, if there are going to be environmental uh, mitigation needs. Um, we are also trying to find projects where Harris County Flood Control District or Galveston County. Consolidated Drainage District is willing to partner. So, but um, so the next thing I'm going to talk about, we are really excited about this. Right before Christmas, we found out that there is a pot of money that's almost $800 million. It's called the Flood Infrastructure Fund, and um, this was set aside for flood control projects. And the Texas Water Development Board is going to be um, handing out those grants. So. We are hoping to have a master drainage plan for the city of Friendswood done using this grant and it would fully fund the master drainage plan. And so this would be, this would be different from the, the study that we already had done by um, Dr. Bedient because this would look at specific projects that were realistic to build. So it would take into account real estate, it would take into account environmental, environmental mitigation and it would be real projects. So, so some of those H and H studies I was talking about needing for for these projects that would be included as part of this. So, uh, uh, so this this plan would um, not only look at flood control projects along Clear Creek and its tributaries, but it would also assess any street drainage problems that um, that we needed to solve. So it's an opportunity to obtain a free grant, a study that, I, like a study of the size that I'm talking about is probably a $500,000 study or more. We were informed that the, uh, the Texas Water Development Board is very enthusiastic about giving grants to coastal communities that were damaged by Harvey for planning studies. So we're, yeah, this is great. <laughs> so yeah, we're really excited about this. So the reason why um, I'm not going into all the other projects we have identified is we're hoping 
to have those projects either studied and built using the CDBG mitigation funds or studied through this master drainage plan. So, <clears throat> okay, so for the, the application process for this uh, drainage plan, there's two parts. There's a short abridged application and basically from what we gather, if you are approved from this first application, you have a 99 cent shot of getting the grant if you submit a huge ginormous binder full of information for the second part of the application. We have been talking to a consultant who has an expert that worked for over 40 years at the Texas Water Development Board. So he knows the people down there, he knows this, these types of application processes. And um, the, the consultant is RJN Group and they, um, they are going to do the, the first abridged application for us for $4,400. And if we get approved for that, the cost estimate for them to do the, the large application is about $30,000. So for this $500,000 plus study, we will only be spending $34,400. So that's really exciting. That's cool. Good leverage, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so like I was saying, this would be assessing specific problems or a spe spe specific street drainage problems and then it would be assessing flood control projects that were um, not design level we might still have to do some design level modeling to change outlet sizes or you know small things but it would basically give us an idea on which projects we need to go af after based on the real estate um, it would provide the H&H &H modeling. These benefit cost assessments would be done so they'd be prioritized. And uh, we would also know what types of mitigation we'd need for environmental impact. So we'd be able to, you know, from this, we'd be able to kind of rank which ones work best. And it would be, it basically would be the best solution for Clear Creek and its tributaries. So, so we're hoping that um, these grants are, or the grant application is anticipated to come out in about April. And then um, if it was awarded, it would probably be a year from then. And then I would guess that a study of this size would take about a year and a half to two years to complete, because this is a really large study. So the other thing, we haven't updated our master drainage plan since 2007, and that was pre-Harvey. So the, the uh, flood, control projects, you know, that, that were, or the, the, the issues that we're concerned about now are very different from what was in our previous plans. So, so the projects that are identified through the master drainage plan could utilize a mixture of bond money, grant money, and partnering opportunity funding from different partners. Okay, does anybody have questions? Well, actually, first, I'd like to thank you very much for spending your evening with us, and it's really, <laughs> a lot of information so that's fantastic yeah I so there, thank, we, thank you so much you're for, welcome I am um, like I was saying before we have we have several other projects that we've been working on identifying and at some point in the very near future we will have a better idea of which projects and which combination of projects we will be applying for these community block development mitigation grants both on a regional level and a city level so once we have that better identified, you know, I'd be more than happy to come back and give an overview of those specific no, it, projects. It's great, because this, this does impact some of our work. I mean, as an example, most recently was the Whitcomb property uh, came to us for um, looking at their site plans and the development for, for that property. And then the terracing came up and the drainage district came up, all those things. So uh, right. it, it really is, does tie into what we do. The, um, the consultant that we're using for the drainage study is the reason why we went with that consultant is because they worked on the Wickham property. So they already have their model all set up to just throw stuff in. So it's, I mean, normally an H&H &H study like that would probably cost thirty to $40,000. And then if you partner with Harris Blood Control District on projects, they have a whole huge stack of requirements so that the cost goes up to $60,000. But we were able to get the, this um, terracing uh, study in, on the Wiccan property done for $21,000. So, so we're, we're trying to do things as frugally as possible. And we do plan on doing as much as we can in-house as well. 
any further questions? I do. I have a question. So there, um, there is, was a lot of talk about a uh, drainage basin through the Harris County drainage district right there at Dixie Farm Road by the um, paintball. And what what happened with that? I mean, it seems to have dropped off the radar. Is that the property they just bought up there? Yes. So that that's on our we have a, so that's on our list of uh, projects potential projects we've identified. I am very concerned that with that project, since Harris County Flood Control District purchased that property, with the um, with the federal study that they're working on upstream, apparently when they have large events, it is going to cause impact downstream. So they are looking everywhere to see where potential uh, offline detention is to to mitigate for that and i'm i'm worried that they're going to try to use that as a mitigation opportunity so it's going to be really important for the city of friendswood when we partner with harris county flood control district to make sure that they're not using any projects that they assist us with to account as mitigation for that federal project i know that's really complicated but <laughs> So it's not a good thing to make that a drainage? If they, if, they, if they don't count it as a credit for that federal project, it'll be great. But, but see, with that federal project that they're planning on building, they're actually, for like a 500-year storm or a 200-year storm, they're going to be causing a rise downstream with the way the model is showing. So they're trying to find areas where they can put in detention so it'll capture some of that runoff. Mm -hmm. So I'm I, like when when we went and talked to them, they were hinting, you know, that they really needed detention. We just don't want that. We don't want our detention to be a detention that they're trying to use to credit for that mitigation for that federal. We project. did all the work and don't get any benefit. Right. We wouldn't be getting any benefit. Oh, I gotcha. And, yeah. It's better than when the developer owned that property and was building it up. Yeah. So that the fact that drainage district now owns the property. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, but that's on our list. I mean, it's just something we're going to have to talk to them, and it'll probably be more of a political um, effort than, than anything else. So. Okay. So, Samantha, teach me something about drainage 101. When you put in detention along the creek, mm -hmm. does it help both upstream and downstream, or does it predominantly just help downstream of that point? It, so, so what I'm wondering which, about, when we do the on, Whitcomb property, like offline, would the people upstream of that, most of friends would benefit? I would think the people upstream would benefit, yes. It, drains so it, it helps both ways. Yeah, it would help both ways. Okay. The only, the, so the problem, the, one of the problems though, the way the, the, the modeling was done for the city with the rice study, they, they changed the shape of the channel when they modeled alternatives but they didn't account for the, that the flows would increase. So a lot of times when you do terracing, when you deepen and widen the channel, it causes a rise downstream. So for when, when we start doing the design modeling for these projects, we're either gonna have to put in, we're, we're, we're probably, I mean, ultimately we're gonna have to put offline detention into capture to mitigate for, for that increased flow. Does, does that make sense? It just moves some could move the problem downstream to the next choke yes, point. Yes, right. If we just terrace, we'll just be we'll just be moving the problem downstream. The only way it would work is if we if they terraced and work yes. and we did it in conjunction. Right. But since we haven't been working together like that, it's it's um, the only way that that it's going to work is if we do offline detention right. to mitigate. But maybe right. out of this out of this federal study, you know, right. we'll start talking about these. But you got to start somewhere. I mean, you can't yeah. wait to do it all at one time. Right, that'll right. never happen. And that's why that's why we have the, the short term agenda. We're just yep. digging in. We're going to start doing projects, and then we're hoping that all these regional studies that are ongoing and and through our master drainage plan, you know, we can identify the overall plan so that nobody nobody gets flooded by us and we stop getting flooded. Now, all this work on Clear Creek and the terracing and the inline tension, that also helps the tributaries going to Clear Creek, like Mary's Creek and Cowers Creek. Wouldn't, wouldn't, that have, wouldn't they see some benefit as well? Because a lot of times Mary Creek rises when 
uh, yeah, Clear I mean, Creek if, backs if, up. If we if if we had a substantial amount, you know, of, of widening on the on the main stem, it would benefit the tributaries. But yeah. I would imagine that when we do this master drainage plan, that we would we will look at some widening to some terracing and inline detention on those tributaries okay, as well. That'd be, that'd be great. Because that will likewise benefit when you you know when we when we reduce all that flow coming into um, the main stem, mm -hmm. then the main stem doesn't have as much flow, so it doesn't flood as much. And the tributaries affect a lot of homes too: Marys Creek, Chickers Creek, Cowers Creek. They all wind through many neighborhoods. So I know um, we. I think we recently acquired the 222 Shadwell property, and I have um, I have some maps back in my office where I have like City of Friendswood acquired properties and Galveston. County consolidated drainage just properties, and it looks like there is potential for a terracing project okay. along there. But the bond money is only for the main stem, so that would have to come from a different pot of money, okay. either working with Galveston County consolidated drainage district, or you know, or a CB or a mitigation grant, something okay. like that. Wow. So you're dealing with a lot, of, a lot of different partners, <clears throat> and I'm impressed that you can keep up with all of them. <laughs> the one I don't hear much about is the Army Corps of Engineers, except in the way of keeping them out of our way. You know, are they actually helping in any way? So the, it's, I worked on that, on that, uh, on the Clear Creek reevaluation study, and um, the problem is that there are a lot of wetlands in, in uh, the city of Friendswood, so. That makes our projects more expensive. Um, that's part of it, you know. But um, they're they're helping on that Clear Creek study at this point. I think they're contributing two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to that study, and it's supposed to be from Dixie Farm down to Clear Lake. I think the total amount of money going towards that study with all the partners is around one and a half million. If projects are identified out of that study I would imagine that since they're helping fund that initial planning study they would probably be engaged to some extent okay so they are actually concerned about flooding as well good right. the, That's nice the only, <laughs> yeah it, it's just the um, but you can't go destroying habitats willy-nilly <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, that's one of our that's one of our big challenges. That's is fair. The, is the I, I guess their goal is less about flooding and more about environmental. Is what I. I, I think I, they're I, both. I think they. Well, can't. keep both in mind. But it, but that that study, I think it's a great place for League City and Friendswood to start really talking to each other. Yeah, good. So, you know, hopefully, every, you know, everybody will just keep talking more and instead of having four studies at once we can move it to one and just think how much money that would save you know right no that's right no. well thank thank you very much this has been very interesting thank you you're welcome thanks for taking the time I, are we worried about time uh no i had not. hey samantha <laughs> i had i had two more 101 questions and we can we can we can talk later if we need to i mean i know it's getting late um so all of all of our discussions are are focused on drainage mm -hmm. are we far enough upstream to not worry about these improvements also raising our risk for storm surge is that i like i've thought about that to some extent i mean already i we are at risk of surge if we ha if we had a big precipitation event compounded with storm surge it would like be really I disastrous and and we haven't looked at how even our improvements would okay. affect that scenario so it's an interesting question. Okay. So that doesn't get enough attention. I no, okay. and I don't think I don't think that the I don't think that they're considering that with this uh, the federal lower okay. clear Creek study. Thank you but, for that. Um, I do. I, when we were talking with Dr. Bedient, he informed me that they had done some modeling of that nature for Clear Creek, and I I don't have it on hand yet. But once once I have that study, you know, I'd be more than happy to share that. Yeah, I do like I do think thing. that's a concern, but um, modeling the the surge and uh, you know the the inland flooding interface becomes very complicated right. and expensive. Sure. The other question I had, and I hope I can articulate this well, but I, I'm keying in on a comment that you made during the presentation. We've got improved models, models that we've not used before. That's going to give us data that we probably have not had. Um, I think you mentioned it was the 2D model. 
Yeah, the one D two D model. I'm assuming most of our drainage decisions are based off of older data. Do do we know? Is there an error factor that we put in our decisions, knowing that we're using stale or older data, or is that something we should be thinking about? I don't. I don't think anybody's really even done some kind of correlation. I just so so kind of a little more about how the. The model, this new model works. So we're still going to be using the 1D along the channel, but the overland flow is going to be this finite element analysis. So it'll be all these little squares, and you'll actually pull in uh, like topographic data. The the previous way the runoff was calculated didn't have that much information in it. Okay. So I think. I think um, just having you know that much more detail is gonna is gonna make a, a difference, and and yeah, it, it'll be really interesting to see how. That's just the 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 people doing the modeling. Their their comment was that they think that we'll see more runoff into Clear Creek. That's what scared me was that here we are making drainage decisions off of data that it might not be enough to protect the things that are important to us right now. I just don't know how big that risk is. Well, uh, like on top of this, this isn't necessarily a good comment for the city, but um, do you, so the, um, do you know about the TSARP 14 rainfall? No. 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 I'm, I'm okay, pretty so much going to answer no to anything. You ask, so. <laughs> they, they recently updated the rainfall information. So like all of these models, they use like this 100 year rainfall and a 250 year rainfall and a 500 year rainfall. Well, the rainfall data that they were using before for a 100-year rainfall, for example, was 13 inches. With this new TSARP study, it's almost 17 inches. We've so, seen that on some plans. Okay. I think that the Dr. Bedient study did use that information. That that, but but in our in our building codes, when people do detention for their development, they are designing to the old 100-year. So at some point. And we're trying to get everyone on board through the the like the Clear Creek Steering Committee, mm -hmm. but we're trying to get everybody on board to adopt that change at the same time, so developers won't run over to the city over here because they didn't adopt it. But right. really, everybody needs to do that. Yeah, that's that's really where I'm leading. Right. Only if there were people in the room that could building, hear these questions. <laughs> no, I'm just worse. kidding. But yeah. is there? Could we be more aggressive with our? Our drainage well, Frenchwood has been more aggressive to, as a builder. Normally, in some cities, you don't have to build 18 inches above floodplain. Frenchwood has always been two feet above floodplain okay. for many years. So they, we have a little larger margin of error. So yeah, and we saw that in the Clear Creek um, church plans. They had we saw that they had adopted. Um, I remember that. Levels. Yes. Let me just say we haven't made a lot of decisions yet, Marcus. So we have been saying all along get this bond passed, if we did, then we will start kicking off these. Could you step up to the. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, uh, we'll kick off these more detailed studies and we will look for partners because we know that yeah. even though we have this bond money, we don't have enough money to solve this entire problem, no matter what the answer from these, from these studies tells us. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, Clear Creek, uh, Galveston County Consolidated Drainage District, they did some studying you know, on Imperial Estates, and, and that was a, pretty much a, a no-brainer. I think, Samantha, you would agree that that's taking, a, that, taking all that area. dirt that's out of there a is, is a win, you yeah. know, and we had the property, and we, and we the drainage district had the money to do it, yeah. so so that was simple. You know, that yeah, that was a decision that was made, and, and that's, that's going to be a, a benefit, but as far as you know, you're saying, "Hey, you're making all these decisions based on old data." Well, we're not. We're not making. That's good to hear. Yet. Yeah, we're getting this. Yeah, that's right. why. That's you're, why we you're getting have, smart now. We, right. So the the uh, the Forest Bend project is already funded, and we have another one that is a uh, deep wood terracing. Um, it's it's it hasn't been a, like it hasn't received the grant yet, but it's sitting in there submitted. So these projects that you know we were receiving funding for, of course, we're going to build them. And then um, the this Wickham project, we're thinking about doing another grant for. So we're trying not to. I mean, the the only bond money we're expending at this point is on that Imperial Estates, and that is a huge detention area. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, any, if you ask any H and H expert along Clear Creek, they're like, they'd be, wow, how did you find that much, you know, 
material? Like, how, how were you able to find a detention basin that large? What do you think about Mud Gully? You know, mm -hmm. the, the big detention project going on up there and the, what do we call that, Sagemont, the, the, you know, Burio. up Beamer, yeah. Yeah. you know, that's been going on for years and uh -huh. years, and we hear reports on it all the time, and how they're doing well. That total, and they're in phase three of four phases right now, and at the end of that, they might have 1,500 acre feet of new in lot detention up there. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're gonna probably equal that, you know, with, with Imperial Estates. And so it was just like finding, you know, mm -hmm. oil. You know, it was like, wow. I like as a as a side note. I do know the uh, the federal study that Harris County Flood Control District is doing. I know that they they um, are mitigating for the hundred year T SARP rainfall, but I don't know that they're mitigating for like a five hundred year T SARP rainfall. So um, it could be that once that once they build that design for large storms like Harvey, our flooding is actually increased by that project. And so we're really wanting to get our hands on that model so we can fight back, you know? Yeah. Very interesting. Thanks. Thank you very much, Sasha. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Our next item is consideration and possible action regarding future planning and zoning commission dates. Aubrey. Our next regular meeting is Thursday, February 27th. Um, and then the next meeting after that, our first one in March, will be March 12th. Okay. When is the schools, when are the schools out for spring break? 9 through 13. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm not here. <laughs> I, I'm not either. I'm traveling for work the 10th through the 12th of March. Okay. I may not be here either. Hey. <laughs> we may need to. <laughs> okay, we'll see what's coming up yeah, on the we'll, agenda. We'll, we'll figure it out. One more meeting but yeah. before then. Okay, good to know, though, that's yes. out there. Uh, next on our agenda are communications. Uh, commissioner updates, and we'll go through to any commissioners have anything that they wish to communicate, uh, suggestions for future agenda items, subcommittee, any subcommittee updates uh, or general updates or updates from liaison assignments. Mark, I'll start with you. I'm good, thanks. Please. I have been remiss. I have not made a meeting since October. So just putting it out there, I've been remiss <laughs> because of Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't have called you out for it. Yeah. So. <laughs> you you kind of told on yourself, but okay. I feel guilty, but it's all Charlie's fault every time. <laughs> okay. Well, next time then. Rich? Nothing. Uh, any subcommittee? No, we, we uh, Becky's hard at work putting some things together. I think we'll probably call a meeting here. Not too distant. Well, what do you think, Becky? Uh, we are working on the subdivision ordinance rewrite right now. Um, I finished my first draft and sent it to Aubrey, so once she gets a chance to look at it, and then we'll run it by Mary Kay to work out any major kinks and bring it to y'all so we can meet probably in a week and a half or so whatever days work for y'all. It's consistent with what you told me about a week ago, so that's good. Okay, good. Right, nothing. Any subcommittee? Nope, I'm standing by until Harbor's ready to kick that off, though. So. Okay, Eric? No, sir. Okay, I only had a, a couple of really quick things. Um, one is on March 3rd is the next city council meeting, and I'll be doing the planning and zoning update in that meeting. So anybody? Yeah, March second. March second. Okay, yes. so I'm not getting. I'm getting all my dates wrong. <laughs> so March second. And then March fourth is that thing at the high school. Right. The front meeting. Yeah. Okay. But I'll be giving the city council an update on our activities. So also speaking of activities, Aubrey was kind enough to make copies and pass out to each one of us ahead of the meeting the uh, action items from our, our workshop. And it's, it's a long, uh, long list of things we were working on and focusing on for 2020. 
I don't think there's any surprises or but if you see something that's in error please uh, please let me or Aubrey know but these are kind of just as a roadmap to what we're working on this year uh, for the Planning and Zoning Commission so let me know if you see anything see Aubrey's and Becky's name a lot yeah. That's good. Well, I would uh, like to I note didn't let them that <laughs> no. when do other uh, get item 1B, we marked off the list tonight by inviting Samantha. Yes. And then um, item 3, uh, we have completed. So, already yeah. two things done off our to do list. We're going to need a new list. <laughs> so, so, you're getting your things done. We got to do better on our <laughs> list. Okay, fair enough. Trish, anything? We had the pleasure of listening to Samantha also at our retreat on last Saturday. And uh, had the pleasure of listening to Aubrey talk about the process for um, updating our strategic plan that's 20 years old. And, uh, and parts of it are not 20 years old. Parts of it have been updated throughout the last 20 years. But the staff is doing a remarkable job. There were a lot of uh, accomplishments actually towards many of those goals. And so one of the things that we talked about was maybe having that information shared with council at a council meeting so that people can hear it and it will be memorialized uh, maybe by, by annually or more often. Uh, Aubrey's kind of leading the charge on updating much of our strategic plan. And one of the things that we didn't get to talk about a lot during the retreat was that future land use uh, map and, and just that future land use that I know you're all very interested in. But several of us, including the mayor, have talked about having a, a joint workshop with PNC to address those things as well. So that will be coming up, I'm sure, within the next year. Great. For sure. Yeah. And then uh, Hill also went over several of the projects that the bond issue is paying for in the city, the public safety building and others and kind of gave us timelines and what they were doing with that. And like I said, Aubrey went over um, the, strate the strategic planning and the process that the city uh, staff uses. They're doing a lot of work. They're doing a great job. And so we just need that, I think, communicated uh, with everyone so we're all on the same page. So we had a, a great retreat. And we had no uh, consultant or facilitator this time. Mo did it. And the staff and it was it was very good so it was very productive don't you think do you want to add anything to that no, you pretty much uh, comprehensive, comprehensive what did I say strategic <laughs> probably <laughs> we knew what you meant <laughs> comprehensive plan multiple comprehensive plans actually in one so anyway anything else um, y'all have of us or me okay thank you no, we definitely agree with you, but all the things that go on that you see and, and we see, even a slice of that that staff does, we, we agree with you. Lots getting done. Okay, thank you. Next are staff updates. Aubrey, anything? Uh, so the January uh, DRC report was included in your backup material. Um, it wasn't anything new. I think we met with DR Horton, who's now building out at Friendswood Trails, and it was a follow-up meeting. With somebody else I can't remember off the top of my head um, uh, new development still a little bit slow um, uh, we did have the retreat with the City Council so hopefully be coming forward with a plan to start getting the comp plan um, updates going again um, we'll get with senior staff and figure out how we're gonna tackle that and um, you should have gotten invitations in the mail or email for state of the city mm -hmm. um, it's coming up i believe march 4th um, so if anybody's interested in that third sorry <laughs> uh, i'm like a day off uh so march 3rd I completely understand <laughs> <laughs> uh, if anybody's interested um let us know i I think there may on the RSVP um, there should be RSVP yes, on the there is. invitation. Uh, there's a number you can call or a website. I send an email in. Okay. Yeah. Um, other than that, I think we're good. Okay. Becky. Mary Kay. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. With that, the okay. our February 13th. I did have one other thing. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I sent out an email this afternoon for the 
uh, national APA conference that's coming up April 25th to 28th. Um, so please let me know if you want to attend, if you're interested in just let me communicate your ideas with me so we can kind of um, budget for that. Um, this conference is a lot different than our Texas conference that we go to. Um, it's a lot more expensive. <laughs> um, so uh, like I said, if you're interested, um, I, I need to log in and get a little bit more information. I know our, our local, our Texas um, conference, we can pay by the day. I don't know if we can do that with this one, but if like one person can go two days and another person can go the other two days, then we might be able to share but this is a real uh, unique opportunity, right? Yes, yes. yeah. That, that, that it's here. And it's at the George R. Brown Center. I mean, so these conferences are held in Seattle, uh, Minneapolis, um, San Francisco, New York City. So it's huge for Houston to have this conference um, here. Yeah, that so. would be great if anybody can be able to go or we can share that kind of thing. Yeah. Because I think it would be, like I said, a unique opportunity for us to go see some of those things. We always, I always learn a lot when I go. These will be a lot, they cover a lot more topics. Um, it's, it's incredible. It, the schedule is 90 pages long. Oh my God. <laughs> so yes, it's crazy. So, and a lot, you have to be careful, a lot of their sessions require extra tickets that aren't included in your registration. Um, and then lunch is not included except for one day, there's a mobile a food truck ticket on Monday True. but other than that your lunches aren't included so again it's different than our you know little local Texas conference but it'll definitely be an experience okay with that we are adjourned <laughs>